Hello and welcome to episode four of the Clock Cleaners podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we will be doing a, a bit of a lengthy episode. We're going to be talking about Money in the Bank and then the Raw and SmackDown to follow. Yes. Um, so, before we get into things, uh-huh. uh huh. Enzo spoke with, I think it was Wrestling Inc. Sure. And we talked about this last week a little bit mm-hmm. about the whole Naya Enzo thing and what would have ended up happening. Oh, okay. So apparently, you remember how we got that terrible bullying thing Wait. that led to their match at WrestleMania? Yeah. <laughs> apparently, when Enzo and Naya were together, mm-hmm. he was apparently going to be sleeping with Alexa Bliss behind Naya's back. She was supposed to find out which started the feud between the two of them. Oh. So the bully angle apparently was an afterthought. Oh, okay. So that that was a more of a okay. This is what we want to do, but we need we need to actually have a reason to get there. Mm-hmm. So we need to come up with something. That seems like it. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah. And uh, and then apparently after Sunday night, that feud has reignited. A little bit. Yeah. Yes. Um, I guess we're kind of jumping right into it, That's... but the well, women. What did you think of Money in the Bank overall? It was great. I thought it was very good. The two, the two Money in the Bank matches were fantastic. Um, the women's honestly was probably the better of the two, As, between the spots, the um, yeah, the just the flow, and then kind of like the shock finish, mm-hmm. I guess. Because with the men's, they they did what they normally don't do when they had the obvious winner win win yeah and the only reason why he wasn't necessarily the super obvious winner Mm -hmm. is because they never have the super obvious winner win right and that's fair so um but i think uh yeah i enjoyed the pay-per-view overall uh considering it was father's day and we were doing festivities i missed the big cast brian brian danielson daniel bryan match actually very good I heard it was decent. Yeah. I missed most of the Sami Zayn Bobby Lashley match. That wasn't so good. I but... missed most of the gender match. So all the crap matches, I yeah. pretty much got out of the way. Apparently, uh, Sami Zayn's hurt. Yeah, that's that's what I was about to say. Apparently, he's been dealing with injuries. Yes. That's why he's been kind of limited on what he's been doing. Because mm-hmm. for the most part, he's been like you either like just attacking people. Right. Or, like, being very limited. That's why he, like, he tagged with Owens a lot. It's true. Yeah, so. they don't know how long it was, I guess, going on for, right? Yeah, so there's no definitive answer on that or anything. Yeah. But um, if that is true, that he is, in fact, hurt, that means that there's good reason as to why he hasn't really been doing yeah. a whole lot of good stuff. Mm-hmm. And having him feud with Bobby Lashley to a losing effort where he really didn't do a whole lot kind of makes he sense. got suplexed a couple times, and that was pretty much it from yeah, what I so. saw. That's uh, that's pretty much all that happened in that match. Yeah. S- Sami Zayn ran around a lot, mm-hmm. tried to run away. Yeah. Like you said, women's money in the bank. Or wait, the IC title match happened before that. Right? Yes, yes, it did. You look it for your wire. Match. Yeah, yeah, it's done. Um, Seth Rollins retained, rolling up, grabbing the tights. Right. He's cheating again. I He's don't cheating know. again. I don't know if he- he's cheating. Heel Rollins calling it. How did he be? He had to beat his brother somehow. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that picture you sent with the two of them when they, uh, when they swapped face the faces, it looked exactly like It was good. Yeah. It was good. And now we have a third member. Yeah. Well, actually, we had a third member. Now we have a fourth one, right? It's true. Who's the third one again? Uh, well, you have uh, Damian Sandow. Oh, okay. That's Technically, right. Tony Nese looks like them as yeah. well, but then and, you add Drew McIntyre yep. into it, and it was mm-hmm. like, oh, man. Yep. Because basically, Elias is a beefed-up version of Seth Rollins. Mm-hmm. And then Drew McIntyre is an even more beefed up version of <laughs> of them. It's yeah. great. And then, it's crazy though, because watching the two of them wrestle, if they didn't have different pants on, it would have been hard it, to one tell. One of them just looks slightly <laughs> bigger than the other. I think King Ross says if you put a uh, air pump up uh, Seth Rollins' ass, you get uh, Elias. Yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah, no, the women's money in the bank was good though. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean. A lot of spots where I caught myself going, oh, crap, she's hurt. Oh, that that didn't look good. Mm. Um, Sasha doing what Sasha does. But Know what bothered me? Hmm. Um, the obvious spot ladder. Oh, yeah. Because, like, with the men, 
the the differences in the size of the ladders is a little more discreet. Well, the woman kept using the small ladder. That's what I mean. Like, well, that's what I meant by the yeah, spotlight. Yeah, yeah, no, I was like, well, like what okay, are they, they doing? Because they can only really carry around the smaller one, I guess. That's the reason why. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Because there was a couple of points where they moved around the big ones, but mm -hmm. they couldn't move them as quickly. Right. Um. So a lot of the times there was a small ladder being set up in the ring, which was obviously being used to set mm -hmm. up spots, um, which was a little frustrating because it was obvious, not not because of... Not because of the way they used it, but the deliberateness of the whole thing. Like, obviously, yeah. it made sense. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's a really... It's more of a something who's paying, someone's paying attention to is going to notice. Absolutely. Just, well, and unfortunately, I don't think we can turn our brains off for doing that. Yeah, no. Sometimes. sometimes well, because we know there's a lot that goes into this stuff. Yeah, so, absolutely. And everything is deliberate. Well, yeah, I guess the women were kept off of shows, house shows on the weekend, so I guess they probably had extra time to prepare for this mm -hmm. because, well, this is the third one, only the third one. Mm -hmm. And this one was significantly better than the last yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Well, granted, it had eight people as opposed to mm -hmm. five the it's last five? time. I think it was five. Tamina, Charlotte, Becky. Carmella. Carmella and um, Natalia. Yeah. So... <clears throat> But yeah, this one you had, you had um, Charlotte Becky, mm -hmm. you had Ember Moon, yep. who's probably had her share of ladder yeah. matches. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, and, and this was another match where we didn't know who the winner was going to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was times where, like at the end, where There's Becky a lot of, yeah. was going up, and everybody was like, "Oh, thank God!" And then, nope. Yeah, Becky had a very good reaction. Mm -hmm. Ember had a very good reaction. Yeah, it, it seemed like more or less. Anyone but Natalia, the fans were all right with. Yeah. Even Lana, because mm -hmm. everyone wanted to see uh, Mrs. Rusev yeah. in the bank or whatever <laughs> they want to call it. But she she had a pretty good showing too. Like yeah. she she didn't really go crazy with no. the wrestling part, but she did a few spots mm -hmm. that worked. But Alexa was herself, where she didn't get into it too mm -hmm. much. She hit outside most yeah. of the time, yeah. which hey. is what she does. Yep, and. Uh... She eventually grabs a briefcase and wins. Mm -hmm. Which so. was a big surprise because I don't think many people uh, picked her. Especially considering that there's a lot of people thinking that there was going to be something between Natalia and Ronda. Right. Well, you also thought, you know, you figure Alexa had all this, you know, focus on her on Monday Night Raw. Mm -hmm. And why would it go back to her yep. again? And but then, yet again. There we go. It's, it's crazy that you have this many people. but. Yep. Like, since the brand split on Raw, there's been four champions, I think. Maybe five. Oh, yeah. Because it swapped Charlotte between. Sasha yeah, so for many like times. a year. And then um, Bailey had it for mm -hmm. a brief period of time. Then Alexa and Naya. Naya. So, yeah, five people. Yeah. Crazy. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll talk about the women's title match, I guess, now. And yes. Then we'll talk about the men's. Because they are men. relevant. Yeah. And um, Rhonda knows how to sell. Yeah, that was it was a good match. Yeah, that I mean, was, she probably oversold for some of it, but I mean, it's better. She made than Nia look good. It, yeah, I was gonna say it's better than having it not at all. Mm -hmm. um, and another match where we didn't know where they were going with mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we kind of speculated that if the women's Money in the Bank match was on earlier, that we probably would have a cash in. Yeah, but with Alexa Bliss winning it, I didn't even yeah didn't even cross my mind. Mm -hmm. I figured that it was gonna be. Way down the line. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because, like, why would you have her feud with Nia mm -hmm. again? Yeah. It didn't really make a whole lot of sense. Um, certainly didn't make any it. sense to have her feud with Ronda. <laughs> right. So, I figured Ronda would win. She would have that program with Natalia. Mm -hmm. And then, if somehow Natalia ended up with the title at some point, have Alexa take it from her and then right. start fresh. That's what I was mm -hmm. thinking. Yeah. That's fair. <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, Rondo was about to make Nia tap out, mm. and Alexa comes out, brings out the briefcase, beats them both, and then uh, starts... I guess she knocked Rhonda outside the ring. Yeah, and then she and mercif mercilessly beat her with the briefcase. Mm -hmm. She ended up throwing her over the announce table, yep. making sure she was dead, mm -hmm. and she was pretty dim. <laughs> Oh, the way she sold. Yeah. She must have learned from uh, Sasha. Yeah, I guess so. Um, so, um, but yeah, then she hits Nia with it a few times. They start the match because she cashes in. Yep. 
Um, Bliss hits a DDT and then the Twisted Bliss, right? Yep. And uh, wins the title. And just like that, Alexa Bliss is back on top. Yep. Which was unexpected. Yeah. But, you know, it was it, it was done well. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was, it was it, fine. It made sense. Mm-hmm. It was... It wasn't over the top yep. or anything. And then the nice part is, we'll get to it a little later on, is it continued right into Raw. Mm-hmm. What they did was, abs- I was very happy with what they did. Yeah. Um, I guess we should talk about the uh, SmackDown women's title match as well. I guess. Yeah, our buddy James Ellsworth decided to uh, make an appearance, dressed up as Asuka. This and- is really funny, mm-hmm. that the thing... That everyone kind of figured would save Carmella. Right. Is actually the thing that made this match worse. It wasn't good the way they did it. Had she cheated by herself. Right. Would have been a million times better than the stupid nonsense that made no sense. Why would she just stand there and stare at him? It made no sense. I I realized that. Dumb. All right. So it looks like Asuka's finally got Carmella on the ropes. Um, Carmella was surprisingly good at uh, keeping Asuka, I guess, at bay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She uh, did a lot of running away, keeping her down, and stuff like that. Um, and then, did the music even hit, or did he just... Okay, yeah. No, he just popped up, yeah, I thought, he, on the apron, yeah. Yeah, so he, like uh, a figure dressed in Asuka's garb just appears... That match was longer than the Raw Women's Title match by five it. seconds. Oh, okay. So it wasn't even that big of a difference, <laughs> no. but. And then the thirty-five seconds afterward was uh, Bliss and Nia. Well, yeah. Yeah. So uh, a figure appears on the apron wearing Oscar's garb, and she's like distracted by it, like looking at it, it's like, "What? What's going on? Is that me, or something yeah. like that?" Uh. And then she kind of just stands there, and just stands there. And yeah, then, it was a good ten seconds that probably went by. Yeah, uh, even it, it could have been longer. longer. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then Carmella kicks her with a super kick, and then she pins her. Right, that's it. That was, uh, yeah, I think that was it. Yeah. So, had this been a normal, like heel cheating win, that would have been so much better. For I, I don't because all the all you really did was make Oscar look dumb. Yeah. So it really didn't. You didn't gain anything. Like, it's fine having Ellsworth come back. Right. But, but do in it in a, a way that makes sense. Right, right. Have him actually contribute. Mm-hmm. Not just stand there and make the foreigner look stupid. Yeah. Because that's what they did. Well, <laughs> I guess we'll move on to the men's title match. Uh, AJ and Shinsuke, oh, last wait, man Brock standing. wasn't on the show? No. Oh, really? Yeah. That doesn't sound like him. No, I know, right? He's usually always there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this match was really good. I enjoyed this. It was good. Um, it went it, a half hour, 31 yeah, it, minutes. It started off a little slow. Yeah. Um, but it did definitely pick up. There was a lot of ferocity in both, mm-hmm. both, uh, both competitors. Um, it's still really funny when Shinsuke does the low blow, <clears throat> but it was even better when AJ oh finally God. just kicked yeah. him. Yeah, because what he hit him with the Styles Clash off the steps, right? Mm. And he got up. And he was standing And then on standing the... on the announce table. And then AJ said, well, I guess this is my only option. Yep. And he just kicks him straight up. Yep. Um, then, then he goes he out. He lays and... him on the... right, Or, you know, he stood there, right? He, uh, Nakamura was just kind of standing there. And then AJ hit the phenomenal forearm. Mm-hmm. Through the threw, table. Through him, through the table. And that finally... Uh, knocked him out. Knocked him that out. That was a yeah. good finish to oh, it. Oh, yeah. Um, cause it wasn't like a dumb spot that didn't work out just right. So it didn't seem, mm-hmm. so it was, it was good. Yeah. They did a good job with it. <clears throat> Actually what they did in the follow up on SmackDown was even better in terms of st- storytelling. Oh it, it yeah. trans it transitioned Shinsuke into his next feud. Right. Right. Because yeah. And they actually set it up beforehand instead of making it seem forced. It's, it's crazy that they actually thought ahead. <laughs> yeah. This wouldn't have happened before the Superstar shakeup because no. the writers were on Raw that thought up with this. <laughs> it still doesn't make any sense. Nope. Um, and then the men's Money in the Bank match. Yes. This uh, was also good. Yeah, it was good. I mean, like like you said, I think the women's was probably a little better. Mm-hmm. Just for the simple fact that, I mean, everybody kind of ganged up on Strowman and it was kind of what we expected a little bit. Yeah. Well, it's like the Royal Rumble. Everyone mm-hmm. teams up on the big guy yeah. and then... Yeah. He ends up fighting him off anyway. Mm-hmm. But there was a point in time where Strowman's underneath a pile of ladders yeah. so high 
that you can't even see them underneath it. It was a lot of ladders. Because they had panned back. I think Finn and Joe were, like, fighting on the, like, on the uh, the ramp. Mm-hmm. And the, you see the pile of ladders. Right. Strowman nowhere to be seen. Oh, yeah, 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 I, yeah like, that's right. Did he get up? Where is he? And then <laughs> nope. he started you to see stir and yeah. you see the ladders move. Like, oh, okay. And then they fought over to where the announce table would be on Raw. Yeah. With uh, one of those big-ass ladders. And yeah, Owens, Owens was going to climb up it, right? Probably go for a frog splash or yeah. something. Because I think, what, Finn and... Was it Finn and... I don't remember who was holding... Or Joe and... I think I think it was Joe, Joe and Owens Owen. over there. No, I thought there was a third person there holding Strowman down. Maybe. That were attacking him. Rude, maybe. Maybe it was rude. He, he likes to yeah. blend in. Yeah, but then <laughs> Owens went up the ladder, and then all of a sudden Braun got up, and he climbed to the other side of the ladder, threw... Owens off and threw uh, two tables with a bunch of crap on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, good so spot. Yet again, uh, Kevin Owens tries to kill himself during mm-hmm. the ladder match. It's yeah. kind of the yep the norm at this point. Yeah, that's what he does. Mm-hmm. Um, and then eventually, Braun wins. Yeah, I was definitely surprised by this. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, the rumor going around is, I guess, when we get. Brock versus I, Ro- I, I Roman. I like that this is their plan. Or Part 25. Plan. Yeah. If the crowd is not happy with it again, we're just going to send Braun out there and have him cash in. So, uh, it's very geez. dumb. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess we could talk about Roman and Jinder, but that's just that the crowd hijacked the entire match. Yeah. And the funny thing, it wasn't a bad match, so to speak. It was funny, the chance that they oh were getting. Oh, my God. Um, it was uh, very colorful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't remember most of them, so to speak, but there was um, obviously these guys suck. Yep. Or these That's because suck. Cena, Cena sucks. That yes, one was that was going funny. Too. I like that one. Obviously, the CM Punk chants were going. There wasn't that many of them no. throughout the whole night, yeah. though. I was surprised. Uh, but I think again, it was just that match. Because Beach you know, Ball came out. That was at the end. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think it had a lot to do with the fact that, for the most part, it was a quality pay-per-view yeah oh yeah absolutely so it overall it was good they would have been jeez oh, yeah <clears throat> don't anyway. remind me of that um, uh yeah as far as oh well, what else do we have that was pretty much it besides well the... we didn't talk about the oh yeah because the raw tape team championship match didn't happen didn't happen yeah, yeah which weird. we i don't know why we were under the impression but a lot of other people were as well they, they, they could have sworn they said it, it was on a raw. number one contendership match right they At, they implied that they think it was yeah, gonna happen. I guess that was bank. what we were thinking. Um, so maybe they didn't flat out say it, mm-hmm. but they they did win the number one contendership. They did. So, um, well, yeah, that was it for Money in the Bank. Mm-hmm. Um, solid weekend of wrestling with NXT, obviously, doing what they do the mm-hmm. night before, performing. Yes. It it is insane how just watching it after because we haven't really been keeping up with NXT itself. Yeah, but you can put on a takeover that's two and a half hours long and still actually feel invested in something that you really don't know mm-hmm. the backstory for yep when we are struggling to really care about a lot of stuff that happens on the week to week on raw and smackdown right exactly um so they obviously they know what they're doing down there they do mm-hmm. yes like that they tag do. team match was fantastic oh very good yeah yeah i mean we've always said well, good things about danny virch and only lord i was gonna say we like those yeah. two which helps but that was such a good match yeah um, um, and then it, it continued into Raw and SmackDown, which, you know. Not very often. No, I mean, happen. Raw was a good show overall, I, I feel like. And, you know, it's going to be the, the same thing over and over again that I'm going to complain about. And that's just the simple fact that it's a three hour show. And you're not going to be able to completely fill it. No, it's not possible. Because, I mean, we got pointless stuff like Bobby Roode versus Kurt Hawkins. I mean,. You just had this guy in a match mm-hmm. for Money in the Bank. And, and now uh, he's beating the resident jobber. Yep, and, you know, a random match of Chad Gable and Jinder, or... I thought that was going to be a squash match, too. Yeah. Well, it kind of was, but, like, uh, actual... For the most part. Like, local talent squash uh, match. Mojo <coughs> Raleigh versus No Way Jose. Yeah, I it mean, was dumb. You know, you got a lot he of He was crap. just filling Baron Corbin's spot, basically. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Um, but outside of the crap, we we had a very good open. I I was oh yeah, that very, was very, very happy with the way they did this, mm-hmm. and uh, you know I've given a lot of crap toward Rhonda and her, you know the whole thing with bringing her in and making her the spotlight. But I mean, if they're gonna 
book her like this, then... Well, they literally took her off TV for a month. Right. So. Um, well, yeah, yeah, because Alexa came out and was doing a whole celebration of her. her. Yeah. With Kurt in the ring, right? Yeah. Kurt was there. And then uh, Rhonda came out and kind of beat the crap out of Alexa with the briefcase and then beat the crap out of Kurt. Because she was trying, he was trying to stop yes. her. Yes. Mm-hmm. Just threw him like it was nothing. Mm-hmm. It, it was it was nice. I mean, granted, she did that to Nia the night before, and Nia is bigger than Kurt. Yeah. Um, and then you have the zebras come out, and she beats them up as well, and it ends with her throwing Alexa through a table, and mm-hmm. it, was, it was just, you know, it, the crowd was into it. It just felt like it was just well done. Yeah, and then they go backstage, and Kurt says he has no choice but to suspend her for 30 days. Yes. Um, so I'm sure you saw the commercial for it as well, but Ronda is advertised for the MSG house show that takes place July 7th. Well, suspend it on Raw. I guess. I guess that's fair. Yeah. You're not allowed to be on TV. I guess that's true. Because those house shows aren't canon. That's true. Most of the time. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, she's going to be on that show. I mean, they've been advertising her for a while now. Uh, Imagine if they took her off just because of this. (laughs) How mad people would be. Right. Um, Speaking of MSG, apparently WWE has blocked Ring of Honor from doing their show. Can they do that? Yeah, because they have the first rights to the dates, but it doesn't make sense. So, that would mean they would have to have have a show show. the day that they... Yeah. That's what it seemed like anyway. I don't know. Um, I don't know. But yeah, that's that's the latest on that, I guess, because I guess they were planning on running it like WrestleMania weekend or the weekend before WrestleMania, something like that. Well, they usually come around here like right before WrestleMania every year. Yeah, the March, right? Yeah. Yeah, they do the Road to WrestleMania mm-hmm. tour. Yep, they do the and then they do the Heat Wave tour and then they usually do what the December one, like or is that the Coliseum they do it? Well, the. I don't remember. It doesn't really matter. But usually they'll do a show over here at the end of the year, too. Mm-hmm. So, um, the Rollins put his title up. Mm-hmm. Open challenge, which was answered by Mr. Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. When Ziggler came out first, I assumed it had to be McIntyre actually yeah. challenging for him. Mm-hmm. But they have Ziggler come out, and then McIntyre comes out. But it was Dolph Ziggler who was actually going to face him. Right. So... Um, before this even happened, mm-hmm. while Ziggler's coming out, I'm like, oh my god, they're going to put the IC title on Drew McIntyre. They did not. They did not. They put <laughs> it on Dolph Ziggler. Yes. Um, not much interference. Not very little, right? No, didn't he, all he get did up was on jump, the apron? Yeah, right? he jumped up on the apron, yep. didn't touch him. Mm-mm. All he did was kind of like spook him, yeah. basically. Um, no. So, But yeah, now we have Dolph Ziggler as the new Intercontinental Champion. Yeah, rolling up... Uh, Seth Rollins. After Rollins tried to roll him up by holding the tights. Yeah. Heel Rollins. Um, so, I guess he's getting a rematch next Monday, right? Yes. I believe they said that. Mm-hmm. I was. But I, I don't think they should give it back. They should just put him in the match. Yeah. At Extreme Rules. Who? Rollins. Rollins? Yeah, or well, have it like a three-way or something, or a triple threat. No. Well, in, I, in the match for the number one contender. Oh, 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 that one. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, uh, that's what they should do. Yeah, because, I mean, I would assume that this is probably going to lead to a split between the two of them. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, because. Oh, okay. Because, like, McIntyre, you know, could come out and say that he used Ziggler to originally get the tag team titles, and, you know, they weren't able to do that, so they had him get the IC title just so he could take it off him or something. Well, what they could do is, like you said, have like a triple threat mm-hmm. where Kurt Angle makes it. Like right. If they want it to be a handicap match, but he makes it a triple threat. And then McIntyre accidentally pins... Ziggler. No, pins Rollins. Mm. And something like that. That would be interesting. Yeah. And that's cause... where the tension starts. Mm-hmm. But I don't think they would do that before the pay-per-view. No. So, yeah, 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 I guess. And that doesn't give you enough time to get Rollins into that match, so it's kind That's, of hard. Yeah, to yeah, it's tough to see where they're going with that. Um, like, that would have been something to do a, a month ago. Yeah, and just have like that match at yeah. uh, Money in the Bank. Because they really weren't doing anything. Oh, no, anyway. they were doing nothing. That's yeah. why we were kind of... No, 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 no. I mean, with, with Rollins. Oh, oh with Rollins. Yeah, he was just the fighting champion. That's yeah, the because... Elias feud, while it wasn't terrible, it was just a time killer. Mm-hmm. So they very easily could have just had this happen a because month ago. it's the number one title on Raw. Brock it's the only didn't show up for work again. It's true. 
Um, it's been written up so many times. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Kevin Owens tries to uh, become friends with the monster, as usual. Yeah, because uh, Braun just came out kind of to celebrate, I guess. Yep. Right? He's monster in the bank. Yeah, that's going to get old. Oh, yeah. Um, Luckily, I don't think they plan on having him hold it that long. Hopefully so. not. Um, yeah, basically, Owens was kind of giving him words of advice for Lesnar, saying that he'll help him out, and then when he takes the title off Lesnar, Owens gets a shot. Yeah, I don't know why he was asking for a match against Braun. <laughs> Weird. Yeah. But yeah, whatever. You know. Yeah. Um, well, so we got more nonsense between Sasha and Bailey. It looked like they were going to pull the trigger, and uh, <sighs> nothing happened. No. Yet. Yeah, Yet. I was going to say, but there was Yet. a match later on. Yeah, because uh, I guess Sasha was backstage, and she was all upset about not winning money in the bank, and Bailey said, I need to get redemption on the Riot Squad. <laughs> humiliated her, yes. Obviously. Will you be my partner? Yada, yada, yada. Same old crap. They have a match. Things don't go their way. They end up losing. Mm. Afterward, Sasha pushed Bailey right in the ring. Yeah. And then backstage, Sasha was leaving, and Bailey was trying to get her to stay and talk. And then Sasha drove off, and Bailey threw her water bottle at the car. Mm -hmm. And almost dented the rental car. <clears throat> yeah. Not cool, man. Nah. Should have run her over. I did it for the rock. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Sasha's they gotta do the something new, uh, here. Well, yeah, I, I don't know what they like. Like if you if you're gonna pull the trigger, just do it. Yeah, that's it. Just do it. Uh, yeah, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If anything, what they're doing is just trying to find excuses to have the riot squad on TV. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I guess you're right. If you make this a feud, they're just gonna be completely useless. Mm -hmm. Who are well, you gonna have? Ember Moon versus them? Yeah, it doesn't make a whole I lot mean, of sense. Mickey James isn't on TV. Dana Brooke isn't on TV. Mm -mm uh alicia fox i think she's back from injury well she was was she in the rumble or did she miss the rumble? no she missed the rumble okay yeah she, oh, no i think right she was when she got hurt i think right? she was just cleared but i guess there was some nonsense she got into it with ronda's husband or something oh, that like was that around wrestlemania wasn't it something like that yeah. yeah i think so so who knows with all that and now you have ronda off tv so i would just and then you have alexa with naya so yeah yeah <laughs> But if they make this the B storyline, they got nothing else. Mm -hmm. But uh, oh man, the the uh, B team stuff was fantastic when they were uh, dressed up as Bray and yeah. Matt. Oh my god! So I guess Bray and Matt were supposed to have a match with um, Heath Slater <laughs> and Rhino, and they get to the ring, and then on the Titan Tron, it shows Curtis Axel dressed like Matt Hardy with the wig and everything. Mm -hmm. He starts talking like him, <laughs> and then you have Bo Dallas. With uh, the Bray Wyatt get up, sounds yep. exactly like. Oh him. my god! And but the best is when the camera panned to the ring and you could see Bray just like laughing, like, "Oh, this is great." Yeah, oh, it was very funny. <laughs> they did a very good job with it. Yeah, that. they did. And uh, then uh, Bo, at the end of his speech, he's like, "Enough of this. We're the B team. We're undefeated. We're coming for your titles." Yeah. And then <laughs> Axel's still talking like Matt, and Bo's like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "I'm staying in character." Yeah. That was great. Good stuff. Yep. You didn't get to watch the Hardys 24 yet, not right? Yet, oh, yet. man. It was really good. They did a good job. Oh, I'm sure. I um, believe it. They th Those are usually pretty yeah. good. Well, you know what was nice is that everything that pretty much happened during this time period is when, well, I wasn't watching wrestling at all from like mm -hmm. 2006 to 2015 when we started mm -hmm. watching it again. So, you know, kind of... Fill it in the gaps. Yeah, a little, a little bit. bit. I mean, like, I knew a majority of stuff, but some things... Mm -hmm. I didn't know. I didn't know how bad things were. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Their 24s are always really good. Mm -hmm. um, Bobby Roode beat uh, yeah, we, Kurt Hawkins. We, we did talk about that. Oh, we did, yeah. That's yeah. Right. Nothing else to say. <laughs> no. Um, oh, we got the, uh, the, I guess we could talk about the number one contender for the universal title. Yeah. So, what was it? When Roman Corbin? fights Roman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Corbin comes up to Angle and basically says, uh, well, I think they like off screen talk or whatever. <clears throat> and he says that we need to figure something out. Mm -hmm. And Kurt's like, we got a job to do or something stupid like that. I, oh, no. He handed we had him to a address phone. the. Uh... Yeah, because he handed him a phone that Stephanie was on. Right. And then he when he hangs up the phone, he goes to Corbin. We got work to do. Mm -hmm. So he goes out to the ring 
and he says, um, starts talking about the universal title, and then Roman comes out. Right. Roman goes, oh, I should I should be the universal champion, yep. blah, blah, blah. Oh, I beat Brock at the greatest Royal Rumble. Yeah. And then for whatever reason, Bobby Roode, uh, not Bobby Roode, Bobby Lashley comes out, mm. um, and then him and Roman kind of go back and forth. Um, Bobby Lashley smiling away the whole time. Uh, <laughs> Doing his thing. Yeah. So, um, but basically the two of them think they both, or each of them think that they should be number one contender. Right. Whatever. Um, and then the Revival come out. It's like, oh, we're better than both of you guys. <sighs> I'm probably right, but I yeah, yeah, I don't want to say you're right, but uh, there's a good possibility you're yeah. right. So yesterday, uh, Tuesday, they announced during the day that um, a big cast was released from the WWE. Yes. And we were thinking, so, yeah, it's been a while since they kind of did a mass release. I'm like, I wonder who's going to be next. And then I'm like, oh, I know who. The Revival. Because, it, it, really, it makes the most sense. Because they're portrayed the worst that of the people that are actually on TV. After the Raw 25th anniversary crap, this mm-hmm. crap. But, yeah. I mean, you got to think, you know, the Ascension has still kept their job after all these yes, years. Yes, but they're not on TV on a regular basis. I guess that's true. So, I think that... Being off TV and being portrayed horribly on TV is probably a little a little better to be off TV. I guess that's true. You're protected true. a little more. Yeah. So, anyway. I, I would be very disappointed in that. But granted, I, they're not doing anything, yeah, so... They're probably better off if they do leave. Well, they, they really need to be able to move people around more, like with NXT and stuff like that. Like, they did a show against the Undisputed Era... Somewhat recently. Yeah, yeah, it was like a house show. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but whatever, that's not actually relevant. No, not at all. Um, they have a match between the Revival and uh, Bobby Root. Bobby, <sighs> Bobby Root. Bobby, Bobby, Lashley. Bobby Lashley and Roman Reigns, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, Roman and Bobby win. Yep. Bobby hits a spear on one of them, kind of making I like fun his, of Roman. I like his spear, though. But I would be fine if they did, you know, something between the two of them. What? Like uh, a spear versus spear thing. Yeah, something yes. like that. But the, he, was, he wasn't he was doing it because that's what he does. He was yeah. making fun of Rome. No. It's, he used that in Impact. He did? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know mm-hmm. that. Because I'd never seen him use a spear before. Oh, yeah. So. Yep. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess that's something. That's it's, something it's, that you can build a feud it's on. It's something. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's that's that. So we don't know how many people are going to be in this number one contenders match, It'll right? It'll probably be six, five or five six. Or six six pack challenge. Didn't they do yeah. that last year? Just five Rose? last year, right? Um, we're gonna see those two. Probably Seth. Yep. Would be. I'm sure third. Elias will get thrown back in there. Maybe Finn. Because he did sing a song later it. on about wanting to be in it. Yeah, so. I mean, anything. no, it doesn't mean anything. But who else are you gonna put in there? Yeah, everybody Finn. that was in the Money in the Bank that didn't make it. Yeah, Finn will probably be in it. Mm-hmm. So that's five right there. Um, well, it also depends where they go with the IC title. If yeah, Seth well, still continues to, yeah, if Seth is in it, then it'll be mm-hmm. it'll be five. If not, then it's only four. Right. Unless they put Bobby Roode in, and then they'll have six. Yeah. But who knows? Maybe he'll be facing Kurt um, Hawkins at the pay per view. Yeah, on the pre show. Yeah. Or <laughs> in the main event. So, um, speaking of Hawkins, I think he tweeted out. Maybe it was Sunday night, but he's like, oh, Ellsworth is back. I might be able to get that victory. (laughs) (laughs) It was pretty fun. Uh, Yeah. Uh, And and I guess we talk about the main event, right? Yeah. Um, So for whatever reason, they're backstage. mm -hmm. um, And then Owens and Corbin are kind of bullying Finn Balor. Oh, yeah, it was Finn. Right, right. Um, And then Braun comes over, and he's like, oh, I'm here to help my buddy Finn. Yeah. And then they have a mat. They kind of set up a match between uh, Corbin and Owens and Balor and Braun. Yep. Um, and this did not play out the way that it would make sense to play out. Uh, I honestly didn't expect Constable Corbin to be wrestling. Period. Yeah, I, I like that he wrestles in the. Uh, that's fantastic. That, that's so good. He's sticking to the part, and yeah. it really gives him something to do. I mean, he's he fits the role pretty mm-hmm. good. I mean, he's perfect lackey for Stephanie. Yeah, it, it it it's a good direction to put him in. Yeah, especially with something you're not doing anything with. And while I was surprised that they had him wrestle, I'm glad that they do mm-hmm. because he's an authority figure that actually participates. Yeah. So he can possibly have 
repercussions for his actions yep. and stuff like that. We don't want you out there fighting No Way Jose and uh, Mojo every week. Yeah, it's so a waste here, of this, time. Yeah. Um, but it ends up being Corbin. I think he hits the end of days on mm-hmm. Finn. Yep. Uh, pins him for the win. That's it. And that's how Raw went off the air. Yeah. It's a little surprising, but well, it was. If anyone well. was going to take the pin, it, it was, was going to be Finn. Finn. Yeah. Yes, obviously, not the monster in the bank. No. Um. So yeah, that was uh, that was Raw. That was Raw, and then we got the announcement during Raw that there was going to be a gauntlet match on SmackDown to determine the number one contender to face AJ at Extreme Rules. So finally. Shinsuke is through. Or done. AJ's done with Shinsuke. Yeah. Finally, because that went on for way too long. A little bit. Um, basically, since February. When you think about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Right before. Uh, right, right after right. AJ defended his title at Fastlane. Mm-hmm. Um, so SmackDown opens with Paige announcing mm-hmm. the Gauntlet match. Um, also, like congratulating the SmackDown people for a good pay per view and yeah, everything. Yeah. Um, and then the show opens with Carmella. Yep. And she pretty much pretends to be humble and saying that, like, she used to doubt herself and everything. And then she kind of sma- sna- snaps back to reality mm-hmm. and says, I did it all myself. I didn't need anybody. Yep. And at that point, Asuka's music hits. Um, and then a very clearly not Asuka character comes out dressed as Asuka. Yep. Mr. Um, Ellsworth. Yep, which was not a surprise. Mm-hmm. Um, he talks about how great Carmella is and all the people that she's better than, mm-hmm. including Mother Teresa. Yep. And then Asuka comes out, and she kicks Ellsworth in the gut, and he goes down. Carmella super kicks her, stands tall, and that's it. Yep. Um, yeah. I guess... They're going to continue with the... Going to keep going. Confusing nonsense. Yep. Whatever. So, I mean, I don't know, man. I feel like WWE has it out for the Asian wrestlers. It's fair. It's definitely not an unfair assessment. Yeah. But Well, I should say Vince. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. I mean, yeah, Asuka and Nakamura NXT versus uh, main roster. Very, very different. Just, yeah, I mean, like I get that they were booked into a corner with the whole Asuka situation, but I didn't, never... Did I ever expect it to be treated like this? Yeah, no. But yeah, what are you gonna do? Yeah, not not much, yeah, not so. much. Um, then we had Becky Lynch versus Billy Kay. Yes. Um, Becky won, which was not really not a surprise, no. but you never know with WWE's booking. Yeah. But I feel like the Iconics are gonna need to add a third person to their group or somebody with strength be you know not, not strength so much but somebody that's actually like muscle yeah kind of to mina please don't say things like that i yeah, know it doesn't make any sense um well that's the thing on smackdown no one makes sense the but only I, thing that would make sense is if they team with absolution and it'd be a four yeah. person thing but that doesn't make any sense because you're literally just going to have eight person yeah. tags for well if anyone went with them it would probably be mandy just because she fits the the gimmick i guess a little more i guess i don't know i i think that they're the iconics are going to be a uh like a b story that kind of just picks on one person right yeah i guess that's probably how they would have they're to never going it. to be just going to be a number scheme and... two on one deals yeah. yeah yeah i guess so so it's basically probably just meant to mm-hmm. get the faces over for a little bit did you hear i, I don't know if it was triple h or sean michaels they were on one of the calls and they said it wasn't out of the realm to have a wwe all women's show or pay-per-view kind of what we speculated a while back mm-hmm. um so yeah, there's always a possibility i think that uh, Triple H has been pushing for it a while, for yeah. a while, but I don't think they ever found a or came up with a way that that would make sense. Yeah, in terms of their productions mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But always yeah. possible. It would yep. be better for the women in general because you'll have um, instead of having two separate titles, you'll have right different classes well, of yeah, titles. you can have you know a, a tv title or something to the you know a yeah. mid-card title mm-hmm. and then a tag titles and a world title mm-hmm. but and i think the women are at that point where you know they can they sustain. might be able to sustain it yeah, yeah absolutely they definitely have the talent it's and more you, of you, the you exposure. might bring in another demographic set, yeah absolutely yeah it's possible it's it's definitely a possibility mm-hmm. i mean yeah 
That's it. Other other there are other other promotions that just do women's mm-hmm. wrestling. I mean, it's true. You know, and they're pretty popular. Mm. Things like that. I think. Uh, I don't remember the name of the company, but uh, they just signed with Access TV. I guess uh, Mark Cuban brought them in as a women's wrestling show on Access TV, which New Japan airs on. Hmm. I don't remember if it's Women of Wrestling or something like that. Interesting. So, yeah. So, if All they right. do it, uh, you know, I, I don't like the fact that it'll be more wrestling on, but, you know. It's true. That's, that's the other thing. Hmm. But, I mean, it... it you know, you kind of have NXT for a certain crowd. You kind of have 205 for a certain crowd. You, have, you know, it's just kind of what WWE seems to be doing now. Yeah. Is having separate it. shows for separate um, Instead of having markets. everyone watch right. everything. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. It does. Uh, if, so if, up, if they can benefit from it, they're going to do it. True. So up next, we have Jeff Hardy doing a promo. He do. Um, and he's, like, facing away from the camera talking. And basically saying that uh, he's not going to forget what Shinsuke did last week because he... When he kicked him in the head with the uh, Kinshasa. Yeah. Not when he love loaded him. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Other feelings went through his body then. Yeah. So he claims that uh, Shinsuke opened his eyes. And mm-hmm. then at that point, he turns around and he's got like white makeup on, mm-hmm. which I guess is his brother Nero character. I, I guess that's what they're going for. I Because that's kind of so. what he looked like yeah. when he was doing the brother Nero stuff. Um, I'm a little, a little not happy about them doing this because they should have kept Jeff, Jeff for a while, you know, especially if he's going to be separated from Matt. Right. And I I don't know if his injuries ever were anything, you know, worthy. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. It's possible that it was. Is this going to be a short feud where he just drops the title to Shinsuke and is off TV again for a little while? It's possible, but I don't know if they would go through all of this. That's that's true, but you Um, never know. So, but like you said, they set it up last week with Shinsuke and Jeff Hardy match, which yeah. you know they ended it with Shinsuke low blowing him. So they did, they did it right. Yeah, they they did a uh, smooth transition. Mm-hmm. So now Shinsuke actually has something to do instead of you know wandering aimlessly until he finds someone mm-hmm. else to kick in the yeah. nuts. Oh, and his promo backstage was fantastic. To, or his interview, I should yes. say, with Renee. Renee comes up to him. And she asks him about his loss. And he's like, what's a loss? <laughs> and he says, what about Jeff Hardy? Who? <laughs> yeah. And then he, he's like, oh, uh, the referee counted. Or he, he talks about his loss. And he's like, oh, the referee counted to 10 too quick. And then, uh, or he didn't count in Japanese, even though they count in, you know, normal 1 through 10 in Japan, except it's the 20 count they use in Japan. So, um, yeah, they should have went with that. That would have been good. Yeah. I would have enjoyed that. But, you know, it was but good. But it was fine. It was entertaining. It was Shinsuke, good delivery. Yeah, because Renee gets so frustrated with him, and yeah. they, they both play the part, and mm. it was makes good. for an entertaining segment. Definitely good. Yes. Um, we did get the announcement that Sanity would be facing the Usos. Mm-hmm. However, the match didn't happen, but it didn't need to happen. Well, yeah, because basically the Usos came out and said that, um, or pretty much tried to discredit Sanity, mm-hmm. saying that... Um, what they did, they had to do all kinds of stuff when they first showed up to, to be respected and everything. Right. And then, um, but now it's the Uso Penitentiary, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Uh, Sanity comes out and the Usos try to attack them before they finish their entrance. Didn't work. They get beat down mm-hmm. and, uh, Sanity comes up on top. Yeah. No Nikki Cross, but we don't know if they're going to bring her up or not because, I don't know. I don't think so. There was talk going on. Her and Shayna was going to kind of the end of her NXT run. I but, guess, but I still don't know for sure if she's going to be with no, them. No, but you could, you know, do a six-man tag with two members of Sanity and Nikki versus or six-person tag, I should say, versus uh, Naomi and the Ooses. You could. Uh, I, I would have liked them not to announce that Sanity was going to be there and, and then just do like up. an open challenge. You know, the Usos want a challenge or something to that yeah, aspect. Even if they the just, fact that they haven't had the titles in a while. No, or, or even if they just came out and cut a promo and then Sanity attacked them. Just yeah, because that would make more I, I, sense. Because it was like the whole thing where they announced a match like Jinder and Reigns last week mm-hmm. and then it was just a... It was meant to be yeah, a swerve. Right. So. Um... We got a rematch from Money in the Bank for some reason, a tag title match. Um, the Good Brothers against the Bludgeon Brothers. Yeah. 
I thought um, they were going to win at one point. I did, too, because... There was a point where I was like, oh, it's over, and then it just kept going. I was like, hmm, are they going to do this? Yeah, because... I mean, we had a title change on Raw. Maybe they'll do it on SmackDown. That was actually my thought, too. And it doesn't matter. It's not like the title is anything no, no, of no. importance. Mm-hmm. It's just... So, uh, I think Gallows was taken out, but so was Harper, or one of the two. Mm-hmm. And Carl Anderson was really, like, rolling... And then all of a sudden... He didn't hit any high eye kicks, did No, he, he did not. That was, was disappointing. He had a spine buster yeah. and everything. And he had a couple of near falls. But eventually, the Bludgeon Brothers, they... They did what overcome, they did. Mm-hmm. And Carl uh, Anderson took the pin. Yep. And then as they were exiting the ring, they were starting the gauntlet match. And... Uh, Danny Bryan kinda, comes out. Yep. And they kind of stare at that. them. We used to be in a family together. Remember that? It's true. For a very brief period, um, but they were. So I, I would assume somewhat in the near future we'll probably get something between Sanity and the Bludgeon Brothers being the three-person team that's able to take down the two-person team. Yeah, the, And keep problem. them both strong. Yeah, that'll be the next That'll probably be like SummerSlam or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and that brings us to the Gauntlet match. What'd they give us, about 45 minutes? Uh, I think it started at about 9.15. Yeah, right? something like that. Um, first, it was Daniel Bryan versus Big mm-hmm. E. Yeah, we didn't mention on the Money in the Bank uh, oh, portion was, that Kofi, Kofi was the one that they chose. Yeah, mm, makes sense. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Kofi is now tied for the most Money in the Bank matches with Kane and mm-hmm. someone else. I yeah. don't remember who the other person. It's a lot. Is. Um, yeah. So, um, so yeah. Mm-hmm. We haven't seen Sheamus and Cesaro in a while, but they were doing that Disney. I was going to say they were right? Florida. Yeah. Um, or the universal that must be universal. awkward because they took a lot of pictures with the <laughs> with them so maybe they really yeah. did need to go with them or maybe um last year it was what the usos right yeah, yeah. anyway mm-hmm. uh biggie versus dan bryan good match oh yeah yeah i was surprised biggie we know that he's got the potential to be a very good singles wrestler mm-hmm. but i mean you know he just tries time, to kill people too often oh my god when he that hit that suicide, suicide dive, dive with yeah. Brian on the apron. I was like, oh, that looked a lot worse than yeah. it, or it was, mm-hmm. actually. But crazy bastard. Yep. So, uh, but yeah, that was good. Mm-hmm. Eventually, despite, what was it? Um, he went for he went for the big ending, big ending but he landed it, on his head, basically. I think so, yeah. Um, so Daniel Bryan probably a little worse for wear after this match. <sighs> After the whole, yeah, the match, yeah, in yeah. its entirety, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, then Joe is up. Mm-hmm. Well, at what point did I send you that text? I don't remember what it was after. Um, I think it was after the power slam that almost okay. killed Daniel Bryan. And that was that. Was that Joe or was it? Yeah, it was Joe. Okay, it was Joe. Yeah, so Joe hits a power slam that where Daniel Bryan lands on his head. Yeah. Then maybe the th- thing I was thinking of was. Biggie's um, suicide died. It didn't matter. There yeah. was there was enough there. So I text him, and I said, if this was Raw, Coach's word of the hour would be wheelchair, meaning <laughs> what Daniel Bryan's going to need at the end of this match. Yep. Um, and then Daniel Bryan kind of looked like he was in the greatest Royal Rumble again, where his chest oh, was yeah. completely mm-hmm. red. Yep. Um, I think Biggie started that, and, and Joe, Joe finished just, it. Yeah, he was just going to town. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I like the, how they ended this portion of the match. Oh, absolutely. It was good. Yeah. Um, Joe and Daniel Bryan were on the outside. Joe has the Coquina clutch locked in. Mm-hmm. He's near the guardrail or barrier, whatever you want to call yeah. it. And Daniel was able to use his feet to kind of walk up the guardrail and flip over Joe and run into the ring right before the 10 count. Yep. And Joe gets counted out. Mm-hmm. So everybody looks good here still. Um, yeah, he barely makes the count, so that's yeah, good. Yeah, um, and then at this point, the Bludger Brothers come in and beat the crap out of Daniel Bryan, for, which I'm guessing this was probably a spot meant for Big Cass. Yeah, I guess so. I guess. Um, uh, it's funny because I was thinking this last night. Like they mentioned him an awful lot for a guy who just got released. Yeah. Like they said his name multiple times. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, usually they just like pretend like it's not a thing. I, I think it was a similar situation with, you know, obviously before everything happened with Enzo, but you know, kind of enough was getting to be enough. I guess maybe. I guess you know everything that happened with him going off script, and then apparently he was becoming a pain in the locker room, and yes. I guess 
I don't know, apparently he got locked in a bathroom at one point on a, I don't know if it was a bus or something like that or a plane, whatever it was. Um, and I guess he thought he was being ribbed and he kicked the door out and everybody oh. else had to go to the bathroom with no door on for the rest of the trip. And then, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm probably complaining about losing multiple times to Daniel Bryan. Uh, if, maybe. You know. I figured maybe it was just him losing because he was gone, mm. not because of uh, some. Not him oh. complaining about losing, but losing because they were getting rid of him. No, I guess this was... he. Vince showed up, I guess, early to SmackDown and fired him there. Really? That was what... Yeah, that's what huh. I read. Wow. Um, that's very surprising. Yeah, I mean, you know, just it's crazy to think that Carmella is the one that outlasted the three of them. And, uh, you know, Enzo and I guess Big Cass aren't on the greatest of terms. Not from the sound So of it's it. not like they could even get together on the indies and... They could. I mean, yeah, they could. There's no reason why they can't bury the hatchet. Oh, speaking of which, um, I saw pictures from Eternal Con this past uh-huh. weekend with Enzo at his booth, and no one was there. Uh, no, I mean, there were probably people there. It was just, it was kind of sad. It was kind of sad. It was like when uh, Jake was there, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, nah, nah. It's. it's it's still technically kind of a niche thing, wrestling, and to begin with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's not a lot of people. Who... Mm-hmm. But I don't know. No, no, just kind of desperate. You know, yeah, it, it, it... it is what it is. Yeah. So, um, he he definitely didn't have Mick Foley, you know, going through his merchandise like we did. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> that is true. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So uh, Danny Bryan's li- pretty much laid out. Yep. The Miz runs down as fast as he can, pins Danny Bryan. He... Hits, yeah, skull crushing finale yeah. and pins him. Yeah. Which yeah. is good. Perfect. Yeah. You know, we know this isn't. Yeah, this isn't over. We're gonna get that big payoff. Oh, you're talking about with uh, Miz and. Danny oh Bryan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um. So and then Rusev is up. Mm-hmm. He has does. He didn't sing? No, I don't think he did okay. sing. I didn't. I wasn't sure. I couldn't remember. I know he had a pretty long song before Money in the Bank. Mm-hmm. Um, so Rusev comes out, um, and then it, they actually did a pretty good job of teasing both of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and again, this Because The Miz was fresh, too. It's not like he had yeah. really any action. Mm-hmm. And they're doing a good job still of making the Miz look competitive, mm-hmm. which is important if you're going to actually push him again. Right, yeah. Um, even if it's not now, it's something they can do in the mm-hmm. future. Um, eventually, although Rusev does indeed get the Miz to tap out to mm-hmm. the accolade. Um, oh, didn't mention Money in the Bank when he got the triple stack. Oh, yeah, the stack <laughs> with three people. That was great. That was cool. Um, so... Uh, Rusev is now the number one contender for the WWE Championship. So the real question is, do you think the fans are going to be more annoyed when he loses than him not getting the title matches to begin with? I don't know, man. <laughs> um, well, here's He's not th- beating AJ. Here's the thing. I mean, does AJ... Is, is what they're going for with AJ, is he going to keep the title longer than... You know, that Brock had it. That would be the smart thing to do. Right? Because, I mean, if, if that's the... I don't know what that would bring us to. When did he win the title? November? Mm-hmm. He would really... He would need to lose it well, probably at Mania well, next year. I was going to say Brock needs to lose it soon because yeah. he's over a year. Yeah. He's yeah. at four. He's What was Punk's record? 434 or something like that? Something around yeah. there. Um, and then Lesnar is currently at almost a year and three months. Yeah, something like that. So Close. basically he would need to get like a full year and a half. Mm-hmm out but, of it it's possible but i mean I, I if they weren't going with that i wouldn't even care if they had him drop the title to rusev i know it's not going to happen no because there's but, no reason for it and then have aj pick it back up at SummerSlam. have him eventually lose it to the miz when they have a feud back and forth at say december pay-per-view whatever miz is high and mighty daniel bryan wins the royal rumble and then you have the miz and daniel bryan at wrestlemania yeah that that would that would probably make sense yeah because survivor series they if they're gonna do it like they did last year it was kind of show versus show which is fine i liked it yeah you have the t- the championships mm-hmm. and then one big match between the shows yeah um wait Oh no! They they did the championships. They had they did the teams, and then they did the 
the match between right. uh, yeah. with the New Day versus the the Shield. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a lot going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did have a lot going on. Although I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe they'll do like uh, the Shield versus Sanity or something like that this year. Who yeah. knows? Assuming the Dean long... comes back healthy, or he comes and, back as a face. Well, I I would imagine. The, the way they look at it is it's probably more profitable for him to be aligned with the two of them than for him to be on his own. Yeah. So, we'll see. Yeah, we'll still, see. I think we still have time before he's actually back. Yeah, it, it, it depends on where they're going with the storylines because if Roman and Seth are kind of floundering at the time, mm-hmm. they'll put them together. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah cause cause if I, they I go... really, I don't understand any reason for them to take Seth or take the IC title off of Seth unless he's, he's going, going to up. be... The one facing Brock yeah. Lesnar at SummerSlam. Yeah, and you already gave the briefcase to Braun, so we would assume he's probably going to have a successful cash-in. Yeah, I would like to see him cash in on Brock. Yeah. And then have go from there. Yeah, because I hope they don't do what they did when uh, Sheamus cashed in. When Roman won the title, right? Yeah, they celebrated, and, and then, then... Yeah. It was ruined by that Irishman, <laughs> but whatever. It is what it is. Yeah, but I yeah, no, much rather him cash in on Brock. Mm-hmm. It would make more sense. Yeah, um, it wouldn't ruin anyone's spotlight, and I just I don't like the idea of them trying to protect Roman like that because he really shouldn't it, need it. It doesn't make. It, we can we could talk all day about yeah. this. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, because I I think honestly, if you make. If you give Roman the title and you start writing him a little better, right. that's all you really need. That's true. Cause, cause, but that's, but the, that's been the whole problem from day one. Because yeah, it, it he, he gets better and better all the time. Um, and he just feels more confident, especially in his new renegade yeah. kind of role. Um, and I think, frankly, the reason why people boo him is because they like to boo him, and that's not really going to stop. Yeah, that's, that's because what it's of... become. Yeah, because it's yeah. the same shit every week. Mm-hmm. Nothing changes, so why would the people's opinion change? Mm-hmm. So, whatever. Yep. It is what it is. That's it. So. I think uh, we will leave it at that. Yeah. All right. So, this was episode four of the Clock Cleaners podcast. If you liked what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.